Welcome to Electra Online. Here's the second part of the problem we started in the previous video where we're driving a wedge underneath this object trying to lift it up and we're trying to find the force required to be just at the moment where the object will begin to move. It's called the pending motion up situation. Well, the minimum force required to get to that point. On the previous video, we were able to calculate the forces acting on the block, which was the weight, R2 and R1. R1 and R2 are reactionary forces, which are a vector sum of the normal forces added to the friction forces. And we found the values of those two reactionary forces in terms of the weight of the object. We also calculated the angle required between the reactionary force and the normal force to account for the friction force, which is caused by the coefficient of static friction being 0.35. The angle was 19.29 degrees. Now what we're doing is we're looking at the wedge itself. When we look at the wedge, we have the force trying to drive the wedge in. We have the reactionary force at the bottom of the wedge relative to the floor. And I guess we have to realize that the wedge is being driven over a floor, so we'll add a floor there. And we have the reactionary force at the top of the wedge, which is between the block and the wedge. Notice that the R2 that we found at the bottom of the block is the same as the R2 that we find on top of the wedge. These are equal and opposite reactionary forces that are opposite to one another. We already found the value of R2, but we don't yet know the value of R3, and we don't know yet the, the value of the force, which is ultimately what we're looking for. So when we draw a diagram or a vector sum of those three forces, of course they must add up to zero, that's what it will look like. Now we know the value for R2, so R2 is a known quantity, but we don't yet know R3, and we don't not yet know F. So before we can calculate those, we're going to need those angles. Looking at R3, we can see that it makes an angle of 19.29 degrees relative to the vertical. That's this angle right here. So this would be the angle phi, which means that this angle here would be 90 degrees minus phi. This is 90 degrees minus phi, which is 19.29 degrees, which is equal to, that would be 70.6, not 6, 1, but 7, 1 degrees. 71 plus 29 is 100, so that is correct. So that angle is a 70.71 degree angle. We can also find this angle right here. Noted that this angle will be 90 degrees minus the sum of these two angles, which is 27.29 degrees, which means that this angle is equal to 62.71 degree. 62, that's 99, that's correct. So now we know those two angles one more angle would be this angle right here, which is 180 degrees minus 62.71 degree and minus 70.71 degree, which means that angle is, of course, we need a calculator, 180 minus 62.71 and minus 70.71 equals 46.58 degrees. Again, we're going to use the law of sine to try to find the values for F and R3. We can say that F divided by the sine of the angle directly across F, which is this angle right here, the sine of 46.58 degrees, is equal to R2 divided by the angle directly across, which is the sine of 70.71 degree, I should say the sine of the angle directly across, which is equal to R3 divided by the sine of the angle directly across, which is the sine of 62.71 degree. That means that R3 can be found in terms of R2 to be the ratio we have sine of 62.71 degree divided by the sine of 70.71 degree. And uh, not R but F, the force required to drive the wedge in, in terms of R2 is going to be, oop, we still need the ratio here. R2, that would be the sine of 46.58 degrees divided by the sine of 70.71 degree. All right. So 62.71, take the sine of that, and divide by 70.71 and take the sine of that, equals, 
and then we multiply that times R2, so this would be 0.942 R2, should be an R, there we go, and since R2 is known, so this is equal to 0.942 times 1.373 times the weight of the block, so times 1.7, 1.373 equals, that would be 1.29 times the weight of the block. So R3, the reactionary force on the bottom surface of the wedge, will be equal to that. And the force required, ultimately what we're looking for, that would be 46.58. Take the sign of that, divided by 70.71. Take the sign of that, equals, and that would be equal to 0. 76, well, 770 R2, which is 0 0.770 times 1.373 times the weight of the block. So times 1.373 equals, and that would be 1.06 times the weight of the block. So a little bit more than the weight of the block to lift it up. The reason probably why it's greater than the weight of the block is because the coefficient of static friction is relatively high, which means it's a lot of force required to overcome the friction as well, as well as the weight of the block. But that's how we do that. I know we did it in two parts because I need a lot of board space, but that's how you find the force required to use a wedge to drive a block up in this particular situation, and that's how it's done.